Okay, so we got some bottles outside, and I'm looking through them, and the first thing I see is this one with the high kick up, bubbles, black glass. It's a dollar. So this is an 1850s bottle for a dollar. Hey, it's Don. As you can see, we did some sourcing out in the wild as well. We spent some time driving through the Smoky Mountains. We stopped at a bunch of different places. We sourced all along the way. Even though it was Christmas, it's still enjoyable to source, to hunt. We do collect some things, so some things we purchase for our own personal collections as well as reselling. So without further ado, let's look at some of the sourcing we did as well as show you some of the fine items we found as well. Okay, so we got some bottles outside, and I'm looking through them, and the first thing I see is this one with the high kick up, bubbles, black glass, it's a dollar. So this is an 1850s bottle for a dollar. We're gonna look through some other ones. Another one. So, so far all I found were those two uh, original early ones, 1850s, 60s era. Very obvious by the striations, the bubbles, everything about them, strikes out, blob top, everything. It was totally hand blown, the whole works. The rest of these are mostly a mix of modern. It looks like the person who found these just threw them all up for a dollar, assuming they were all the same thing. Some of these date back to the 20s, 30s, but that's the newest one that I found in here. Um, most all of these are vintage early uh, ones. This one here was actually broken, so someone probably was looking at it and slammed it back down in the bin and it popped the bottom off. The... Now this one has a high kick up too, but it's obviously a more modern, not many bubbles. It's not very well done as black glass. So it's not really worth as much. So here's a bag of records, dollar for all these, some good ones. Got some pins here, some bread advertisements, smoking the bear, breakfast ones, I got the bottles. This is just the first booth I've went into. There's an early key tag, more Cracker Jacks. Yep, definitely Cracker Jacks. So far, and these are some old lights. Those look pretty decent. What do we got here? More pins. Again, these are three bucks for this whole one. Beneficial North. Advertising. Dry cleaner drivers. YMCA member, War Prisoners Aid Committee, YMCA. How much are those? 350. Here's another little bag of goodies. It's not an army, but that's a watch fob of some sort. Pins. There's a ladies button in there that looks really nice. Same one. Now I always check out anything else in booths where I start to find cheap stuff. So they had some books here. I was hoping they were catalogs and stuff, but unfortunately not. They may have been worth purchasing a few of the items. The items on the bottom were actually letterheads for beer companies back in the 50s. Not pricey, but still not worth messing with. Now normally I wouldn't buy a random bag of postcards. But this one has a Gettysburg one on, and I should get at least eight, ten bucks for just the Gettysburg one. Uh, and it's something very well known at Gettysburg, so this one should do very, very well also. So regardless of it just being a random bag, I'm going to buy it for five bucks. One card alone is worth that. Now I always check out the Santa Clauses. This is a 50s one with a rubber face. 
There are some like this one right here, which appears to be an early Coke one. It would have had a little Coke sign or a Coke cap or maybe even a Pepsi one. Without that, though, it's not worth messing with. Now, I do mess with pottery, and I do check out a lot of the figures. Global sometimes made some, so it's an area that I do mess with. You may not see me do it very often, but I do always grab them up and check them out. Now, whenever I'm in a shop like this, I always check out all the booths with smaller things, and you never know what you're going to find mixed in with all the pottery and other items. Now, I usually move very fast. I'm looking at everything. I've seen so much stuff. I've been to so many flea markets and antique malls that it's fairly easy to see where the value is. Anytime I run into postal items, postcards, vintage paper, I look through every one. And I actually pulled out a couple really good ones out of this assortment here, which I'm going to show in a couple other videos here. All told, I probably purchased around 500 or so pieces of paper, whether they be postcards, photos, uh, first day covers, and things like that. Most of the stuff you find in booths like this is already going to be searched through and not worth a ton of money, but I always find those items that people miss or just don't assume are going to carry any type of real value. It's these sorts of places that I can make a lot of money on. It's pottery sellers who don't know how to value paper. Now I have 40 bucks invested into this stack here. To someone else, this may not look like much. This one looks like it's been ripped out and the whole works. This is actually made to mount, so you can stick something in here, uh, another picture or something else like this. This is a full-fledged die-cut Christmas card, a very, very large size one. There's a date on the back from the 1882 era. It's also an advertising piece. This is a giveaway. This is something that they would have given away to someone who spent a bunch of money in their store. It's from Brooklyn from the 1880s. Uh, something that I always look for with like the imagery itself, whenever I see candles in a tree, I can usually date it to 1910 or before. You can kind of tell by there's camels on here, the animals, the instruments, the clothing, the style, the design. This is every bit a nice Victorian item here. This one item here is probably 100 bucks, 125 or even better than that on its own. Um, it's nothing fancy, nothing special, nothing's really on the back. These are all advertising pieces. I don't think the person selling these had a clue what they actually had. There's some damage on a few of them and things like that. They didn't think much of it. They didn't recognize any of the names or anything else like that. They assumed that they wouldn't carry much of a value because of that. These are fabulous pieces here. On average, something like this parrot here, I should get at least 40 bucks for on its own. It's die cut. It's an excellent piece of advertisement here. It's made to hang from the ceiling. Lots of these sorts would have been obviously given away, and you would hang it from your house, and you'd always remember that place of business. Lots of these are from Brooklyn, so I would assume that these came from a Brooklyn estate of some sort. Um, fall leaves. Again, it's another advertising piece here. I would say that's probably Brooklyn. It's got Broadway and 10th Street. It's just a dried leaf, but it's an advertisement piece. There may have been some means to hang it. What I see a lot of times is someone will poke a hole up here or tack it on the wall with a pin, a straight pin. Again, something like this, 30, 34, 35 bucks on average. Now this one here is probably an Easter one. Let's see if we can zoom in just a little bit, give you a little better idea. Lily of the Valley, these usually sell things for me. This one's an actual uh, advertisement piece for Oregon Blood Purifier. It's, uh, let's see, Funder Company. Should do very well. It's a quack medicine. Any of the quack medicine ones, and it says it up here as well, I do phenomenally well. Something like this, 45 to say 75 bucks, somewhere in that range. I got some slides as well, a couple bucks for some slides. I do phenomenally well with these sorts here. I'm going to show these off in a Patreon video, though, but those are excellent items to always buy. I get questions on that all the time. Now, pins I do phenomenally well with. You got to know a little something about what the pin is showing you to be able to make some good money on these. Now, this one here is easily confused with the 1960s psychedelic like drug era need weed chains. But that's not what this is. This is chains for your tires for when it was snowy and icy. This would date to the 1930s or 40s. Something like this, 17 to say 25 bucks. Here's another nice piece here. 
Now, you may not know what this is, but this is Eli Lilly, the pharmaceutical company, and this is a taste tester. Someone probably got to take a tour of the place, and this was a giveaway for that tour. 1950s or so. This is a nice advertising piece. These can run from anywhere from, say, 20 bucks if someone doesn't identify them as being an Eli Lilly piece, all the way up to around 40 45 I've seen some of these go for. It's an early, it's an original. Nice piece for sure. Here's another advertising piece. Member Town Talk Fresh Bread Junior League. Most everybody passes these pins like this by. If there's no real nice imagery or anything else like that, people just don't assume it's worth very much. But this is 1940s, 50s era right here, all the way. You can look up Town Talk and figure out easily online where this was. There's a couple of them, actually. Uh, this is a member of their junior league. I'm not sure if they're a bread salesman or somebody who worked there, but these are advertising pieces. Again, this one here should get me, say, 15 to 25 bucks. Excellent item here. Now here's one. I believe this is from like the 1958 through 64 range, I think. Astronaut breakfast game, and it's got Tony the Tiger in a space helmet. Now, if you go ahead and get some good title for this, um, add some uh, good keywords to this, this one should get you 15 to say 20 bucks on a good day. It's an original. It's an excellent condition on the face. A good image and something like this will do you wonders. This can be sold all over the place. Amazon, eBay, Etsy, as well as many other sites. Now, I make my money back from just one of these, and I also make a profit from just one. So when you add them all together, there's a pretty darn good percentage of profit from just these. Even these smaller ones and this more modern one here, it's Betty Boop. This one does look to be a little older one, so it's maybe not the modern day one most people would think. But something like this is about 6 to 10 bucks as well. Smokey the Bear, Prevent Forest Fire, uh, join Smokey's, uh, I guess, campaign here. This one here, probably about 8 to 10 bucks on average. I haven't seen the red one before, but I found a ton of the yellow versions of this. This is probably one of the hardest ones color-wise to get. People want these two in different colors. Most of these came in several different varieties, so people want to get each one. These aren't meant to have been kept. They were meant to wear because you were helping a campaign. You bought weed chains. You went on a tour on Eli Lilly. Um, any of that kind of stuff could be a reason you find these. Now, here's a 1980s Minnie Mouse Betsy Ross. This is a really nice one here as well. These sorts of things I usually can get about 10 bucks for, just on average for any given one. It's not as nice or as collectible as the newer ones. This is before the highly collectible pins and lariats uh, were, were out by Disney. So this is an early one. This is still collectible, though. People will still want this. Now, these I paid a dollar for all of these cards right here. Now, these you may not think much of. They're Apple Jacks, but they're from 1993. They're still sealed in the package. Mint 9.9 .9 minimum, bare bones minimum. If you had to grade these, these are Nintendo. This is Mega Man and Link when they were just out there. Hot items now, to say the least. 20, 25 bucks a piece for my dollar investment on these two here. Now, it's just one card in here. You get one card per box of cereal. Many times I can run into these single cards used loose in big bags that even at a thrift store hanging on a wall for a few bucks. There were these in there as well. These are the 100th anniversary of racing, automotive racing, Valvoline, 1990-something. Uh, let's see, 1994. I believe these were available from a gas station, if I'm not mistaken. And maybe you get a little pack of them or something here. I don't think this is a regular Trax reissue or Trax issue. Trax made cards as well. Um, and that's obviously who made these for Valvoline, I do believe. Some of these cards you can get two or three bucks a piece for, but if I sell them as a lot, I should get, say, six to ten bucks. So just a few extra bucks out of that. Now, I usually don't run into something worth buying that's sterling like this piece here, but this piece weighs almost an ounce. It's extremely thick. It's extremely heavy. It's well marked. I could probably look that company name up. It may even be handmade. I know that loop is obviously hand attached. Excellent item here. It has a piece of what I would say is jade in there, uh, Southwestern. I paid less than there is value in this in silver. So this was less than 10 bucks. There's $24 almost in sterling value right this very second in this piece, almost. It's just a hair under an ounce. So extremely happy with this purchase. So sometimes if you pay attention, you can get something that's worth more strictly because of what it's made out of. 
probably when this item was listed in the store, they didn't expect it to go up in value, or they didn't go back and check or realize they had that in there. Many times I can nab stuff like this for almost nothing because silver was cheaper when they put this in the store. So if silver price went up, if you don't reprice it, you're giving away money. I've done store reviews, and a lot of folks even have that same mistake online. They'll be selling an ounce worth of silver for 15 bucks, Even when silver went up to $24, they won't think to go back in and alter the price. So I almost never list anything on eBay for silver value. I'm only listing it for historical value. If it's scrap and it's probably about all it's worth, I'll just scrap it. I'll get my money back or I'll hold on to it till the price of silver goes up. Now, I also do very well with vintage glasses, and this is another couple dollars I have into this set here. Let me zoom in just a little bit better here. Now, this is gold filled. It's very obvious if you take a loop to it, you can see the, the way that it looks. You got to know how, how the gold filling looks on stuff like this to be able to really distinguish it on your own. I only have a couple bucks into it. This is a nice pair. No real issues with it. It did come with this case. It does fit in there. This is kind of like a spring, so it kind of just slides right into it has a little bit of damage that could be repaired but it's leather it's a nice decent uh, case here you could come back in with shoe polish and buff this up and clean it up make it look a hundred times better you could buff up the glasses a little bit if you wanted to something like this i think i paid like three or four bucks for this if, if even that maybe 375 something like this i should easily be able to get around say 35 to say 50 bucks at best I do phenomenally well with glasses in general. I always nab up reading glasses. I even have a video just on reading glasses. I may even have a couple videos on reading glasses. Now, just like silver being up, gold is up as well. Gold is doing phenomenally well. Now, I do extremely well with these gold-filled glasses. It's 12 karat, 1 tenth. Uh, it's nicely designed, so someone could actually fix these up. It has some imagery, some design work all the way around the edges of it also. I think you can just see it all the way around on there. So these are 1920s. With gold value on these, there's about 25 to say 35 bucks minimum in this piece here. And I think I got it for around eight bucks for this pair. Now it does have some damage. One of the nose pieces is busted off. I could fix that if I wanted to sell these. That's an easy fix if you got the right tools, right equipment here. Now, value-wise, there's close to 35 bucks in gold value in this, at least. If I sold this as a pair of glasses on its own, that's probably what I would get out of them as well. So I could sell it either way and still make some profit. If I sold it with the case, I could probably get 50, 55 bucks, maybe pushing it on 60. Again, after I repair it. That's like a two-minute fix on this uh, with a quick weld on there. I have the tools to do that here. Now, what I also do with these many times is I'll sell the case cases separately if they're from a specific area or something well known or something highly collectible. Wheeling West Virginia items I do phenomenally well. This is 1910, 1920s and it also has an advertising um, cloth to, to help clean your glasses, wipe them in the whole works here. Excellent item. This helps to prevent fogging if they're in the case also. So really nice piece here. So I could sell this, the case here, and the little piece of cloth probably for around uh, let's say maybe 20 25 bucks so even if i scrap it for gold or i fix it and sell it as it is i'm gonna get at least 60 bucks for this again i got i think eight bucks or so into these i always buy gold filled glasses if they're less than eight bucks when gold is high sometimes i'll just hang on to them till gold goes back up as well the case is in very fine condition but anyway, that's just a touch on what we found. We went all over. I've got a ton of other things we'll be showing in future videos. We sourced at probably a half a dozen decent locations. Uh, we drove through several states as well. So this is just a touch on it. These are items you can find. These are things that are still out there. And these are things that make us a lot of money. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
Big Domino Rally set lets you... And with the Deluxe Domino Rally set, you can actually... Domino Rally! Basic, Intermediate, or Deluxe! Or you can get several sets and go... Each set sold separately.